KYT Yeah, we've been trying to get at somebody uh, KYT because a bunch of people have asked. Yeah, this is our history in this room. This is a fucking uh, other Nervella, but he seems like a nice guy. Mm. Nice. That shit. Quincy wrote Arcade before he died. Orps. He sent me that shit from fucking prison. Uh, chant, that's a beautiful thing, in my opinion, about graffiti, is, uh, nicknames. People don't get to choose nicknames, but the thing with graffiti, you get to choose your own name. Uh, that's the main option. You, that's that one time you get to choose your own fucking nickname. And chant, I chose that. I had a name previous to that, but I chose chant because it, uh, displayed my character because I do the same thing over and over and over again, which is a chant, it's a mantra, and it's good letters, and no one had it. Because the worst thing about nicknames is there's hell of people out there that have the same nickname. You have to be genuine, and you have to be original. And that's just another thing about graffiti is like, people get in fights over like names. So yeah. That's why I chose Chant. And yeah, I didn't, I, yeah. You, how, how did you say that? How did I get the name? I chose the name. Kind of like, what, what, what made you start to get truly invested in graffiti when you were like, really starting to dive into it? Was there something that happened where you were like, yeah, I'm like. Yeah, uh, it was exploring. Getting out of uh, my comfort space. And just, uh, like, Driving around as a kid, I'd see graffiti. And then I started actually paying attention to detail. And then I'd see the same graffiti, and then I could tell that these people had been there and there and there. And I just wanted to be a part of that. Like, who or how'd you meet your first couple group of Because I got caught. I got, uh, yeah, basically caught because graffiti writers, I mean, yo, they pay attention to shit. And they know people paint spots. And I got caught, and I used to catch other people, and that's how I made friends. We all met each other because we caught each other. I'd be driving down the street and I'd be like, oh shit, someone's tagging. And then I'd like roll up on them and then we just became buddies. Like, and life has a way like that. It seriously does. To where like, just friends in general, like really good friends, they just meet up and it's like, you don't even have an option. Especially with graffiti. They'll, even like crews and shit like that it's like it's just like friend basis and every relationship happens by accident you know you don't ask to be friends with someone it just happens like that it's fucking massive <laughs> no yo <laughs> oh. but yo yeah I don't use <laughs> reps right here yeah real quick you can't see this on camera. I'm surrounded by graffiti writers. To find other graffiti, I had to like go to Tower Records and look at magazines. And there was only, you know, certain names like uh, Life Sucks Die, 12 Hours Profits, and to KYT DTC, that's my style. And I never thought that I would ever meet anyone in that shit. And I'm, I'm proud as hell. Like, yo, check the styles right here. Got that blasted in my chest. KYT is just, it's not just a fucking crew, it's like a family. It's like, they're beautiful people. 
And yeah, we all do graffiti, and we have done it, but we all have, like, really good... They're awesome. They're amazing people. Everyone has talent. And that's the whole thing with, like, graffiti crews in general. It's like, every fucking crew, that's exactly the same story. It's like, they're homies. They kick it. If you, if you get a flat tire, if your fucking truck breaks down in front of Plaid Pantry, they'll help you tow it. Shit like that. And it's just like, to be like in a graffiti crew in general, it's, they have to want you to be in their crew, you know? And it's, yeah, it feels great to be in KYT because in my personal opinion, KYT is one of the strongest crews out there. Dude, heavy hitters. Uh, reps, Puzzle, fucking O's 108. Yeah, the list goes on. Fucking Dire. Dude, Dire, fuck yeah, man. Uh, the whole, fuck that shit. Yo, you want to hear a fucking story? Dire, on my goddamn birthday at uh, fucking this bar, I forget the name, a Florida room. Right. Uh, Dire, he showed up on my birthday and he had Mean Streak markers out the game because that's my thing. And then on the way out, fucking, yeah, beef with DFM. Uh, we were, like, about to leave, and then this dude, Six, was there, and Dyer was like, fuck. He had a Cadillac. We were across the street in the Cadillac. We all were in the Cadillac, and Dyer was driving, and then he was like, right, I'm going to go back. And then he went in and just punched uh, Six in his face. Yeah, Dyer, yeah. That fool. And, okay, yo, you want to speak about Dyer? Um him like just keeping count of his freights too he was so goddamn dedicated Dyer was such a fucking boss Dyer's yeah fucking top five just Dyer no no fuck top five no he's number one he always has been like that fool yeah anyways speaking of that shit we had uh one of our homies that was crew KYT artist that had a, a show downtown and me and this dude Brett reps my buddy reps night before we uh climbed up fucking and we uh did a roll down yeah you asked me the last time i did a roll down that might have been it but we did something that said dire forever so when all the fucking homies showed up to the art show kyt dtc they could look across the street dire forever that shit was beautiful so yeah dire's number one what the the night you got busted why don't you tell that story oh and it's still wrong yeah, we're good. Is he picking up on audio? Uh, you can probably hear it slightly. Yeah. Yo, what story you want me to tell? The fucking the double cruise on Sandy when we did the when we hit in the fucking hatch and you jumped off the roof and got. Like, you don't want to tell that one? Do you want to hear that one? Sure. So okay, it was me, uh, reps, and and we were all kicking it, and um, fuck, dude going through some crazy shit at that point still in town and then we went casually to this spot that it, it was pretty cush like when I climb on a rooftop I always think about alright if shit happens what, what's the escape route so I climb up on a rooftop and then I spend my time and I think about you know what's gonna crack off and shit like that and we were up there and I was fuck sure enough I looked uh, down the street and there was a UC undercover cop, and then I like scouted out. Right, and then uh, I uh, had all the shit, had the spot scoped, had the fucking climb all dialed, talk oh. you into fucking going up and doing it. And it was a low roof that you stood on Pushback. over a little alley to the high roof, and there's a shot coming up the fucking road. It was a sick shot. That now actually has some like fake ass inspirational espo. Oh my god, yo, that it. shit is horrible. It yeah. says like live, laugh, love. Moving back, let's, let's, I digress. Fucking, so you had to stand on one roof with all my fucking pro tools that I always fucking bring. Everybody else just bitches about shit. <laughs> and we did fucking both crews, KYT and DTC. Hell yeah. And we were damn near done. We were up there like fucking Indiana Jones fucking digging for the ark, thinking we were totally unseen and we had to fuck we had the little mini roller trying to cut the C we had KYT done DTC you're fucking, right yo with, he's right yeah with 3D everything was almost fucking done and we kept three of us kept 
hand each other the fucking pole because no one could cut the C. And we look over and the chick who just got off of fucking work at the plaid was waiting for a bus and just seen three silhouettes up there. Me walking back and forth smoking ciggies like it's all good. And fucking Chant was on break, allegedly, at the time. It was like, we got to go, we got to go. And just jumped off the fucking roof and was gone. And next thing you know, the whole fucking block is lit up. Excuse me. Arguing with you cocksuckers always makes me kind of thirsty. It's not argument, it's, it's telling the story. A couple weeks before that, that's like how you had gotten away. Like you got sniped on a roof and you jumped, you like, they saw you at one side of the roof and you took your shirt off or whatever the fuck and jumped off another and got away clean. So, uh, yeah, so let me jump on and, that. And that's that's what I did because I was on a rooftop and when you're on a rooftop, you're on a first side cocksuckers always make And then I saw the cops coming, so I knew where they were at and then I jumped off. And tried to slowly walk away because I'm not moving. And I had that mentality. Yeah. 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 Yeah was like, the jig is up, we gotta bounce. He grabs the fucking bucket that we were rolling out of and goes to fucking chuck it on the other building roof and it missed and it fucking splatted on the fucking ground right in front of all the cops. Hey, yo, hey, yo, I gotta jump in on this. Uh, I jumped off the roof, the cops wrapped me up. I had paint on me. It wasn't even the same paint. And then they put me in the back of the cop car across the street and they were like, is anyone else with you? And I was like, no, I was just by myself. And I, I didn't met guilt at all. And then they threw fucking bucket paint on this fucking truck. And they were like, there's obviously multiple people up there. <laughs> that shit was like comedy. I was like, nah, it was just me. And then like someone threw a fucking five gallon bucket paint onto a truck. And they're like, fuck. Yeah, bro. Yeah. That, yeah. So yeah. then they obviously knew we were up there. So we jumped up to the roof that he tried to throw the paint on and we were hiding there and he was fucking geeking it he was like fuck dude i got warrants this we're going hell to jail. yeah we're he had warrants jail. because he, 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 and he we had kind of sitting there like fetal position i'm like fuck that it's not over yet and i started like monkey crawling off of the fucking roof trying to like lift up on skylights and shit and fuck right when the ladders hit the roof i could really embellish this part but i'll just leave it at that Fucking, I flipped the lid on this one hatch, it was open. I'm like, come on, motherfucker, let's go. Let's like hop down in the shit. He's like, is there room for both of us in there? I'm like, I don't know, hold up. And he just fucking cannonballs right on top of my ass and fucking he just squished into this fucking weird little roof hatch and sat there for like the next fucking two hours. How hard would it be to start an authentic, like, to start a crew like KYT in this thing? It's impossible. It, it'll never happen. That shit, it, no, nah, fuck that. That's a good question. No, uh, it, it, no hell no. But you better get started. It's impossible. I don't know. That's what you. That's what I would say. Better it, get started. Yeah. In a fucking subculture that's so inundated with shit, it's like, hell yeah. I was fortunate enough for the last two decades to fucking meet hey, yo, the man, exception to the rule i think you know the the guys on our crew whether they're active whether they're fucking on the bench they're always like the like it's just solid dues have been paid hell yeah fucking with and that like just leaves a big fucking dot 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 <laughs> Are some of like the top new guys you see on graffiti that you're hyped on, like oops, say like top three, top five new writers that you're like, oh shit, this is this is a good path for graffiti or good direction. Top five new? Yeah, newer cats that you see. Uh, homie, TVC. He is definitely, dude. Yeah, he's number one. Um, uh, it. Naive and antsy, they go tough. Yeah. 
Uh, Tuja. Lady Tuja. Fuck yeah. What's your favorite uh, graffiti film ever? Star Wars all day. I can quote that shit like the back of my hand. Like scheme when he was talking to his mother. What, you don't be doodling? You don't doodle when you're on the phone and shit like that? And then she's like, yeah, all city. And he's like, yeah, it, it, that shit is irrelevant. It's not for them, it's for us. And he explains like the whole uh, reason of doing a graffiti is uh, Star Wars all day. Scheme had it best, man. It, like, the way he talks and his mentality is, uh, iconic in my image. Fuck you, bro. <clears throat> and Utter, too. Yo, right now, rest and Utter, man. Fuck go, yo. Next question. Star Wars. Next question. Yo, you want a chant? Yeah, you got it. You want a chant? You got it. Fuck y'all. Uh, fucking Utah all day long. Utah. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, shit, I did the <laughs> <laughs> yo! Oh, no. This is gonna be a sick interview because you all motherfuckers in the backswing. Right here, well, well, Utah. You, Utah is my favorite writer all day long. Because she's hood and she actually took the rap. She got caught, she did her time, and then she was like, fuck that, got out, and she still fucking grinds. And she's about that shit. She's. Yeah. She's ill too. She's shoplifter. Yeah, Utah all day long. Let's get a fucking move on. All right, yeah. Shit, dude. Next qu right. next question. Hey, uh, no, hey, but hey, but real quick though, real quick, real yeah. quick, you guys, if I, uh, you guys want to do some body shots or something? You know that kind of shit. <laughs> hey, what do you think, huh? Couple guys, no big deal. Couple guys, let's do it. Where were we? Uh, back. Next okay, question. This is a good question for you two. I think this is good for you guys. All right. This is what the people want to hear. What do you guys think about where Portland people. graffiti is right now? How do you feel about where Portland graffiti is right now? Go ahead. Compared to where it started. It's compared to where it started, there's a bunch of new jacks that came out from nowhere because it's popular all of a sudden. It's like the, the names keep popping up that no one knows about. Yeah, and we should go down there and we should fucking get these motherfuckers. We should fucking kill them and fucking get them. Nah, we shouldn't kill them. We should just give them fucking fast food. And just, just, yeah. Just tell them to come up with better fucking names. We should get these fucking guys. How? On razor scooters? We'll go down there and we're gonna go up there. We're gonna go down there and we're gonna go up there and we're gonna get them and we're gonna kill them. What movie is that from? We're making a movie right now. What do you think reps about how Portland Graffiti has evolved and where it is right now? What you used to see and what you see now? Yeah, how you feel about that tape across here? <laughs> Good. It's a very metaphorical chant. <clears throat> uh, no, no comment. Good one. Everything's fine. If you want to live in a fucking bar bathroom, fucking keep it up. Okay, and yeah, with that said... It's like everybody tagging on the ceiling, tagging on the fucking floor, tagging on the pipes. Hey, fucking, they're, they're, that's it. I don't, I don't give a fucking fuck. Okay, with that said, tagging is just, in general, you can do graffiti anywhere. Start it at your mom's house. Fresh dancing? I don't know. I thought we were done. No, no, no. no, no. Get back in there. Hold on, hold on. We got a couple good. Uh, what the fuck's your problem, man? It's okay. Don't get all angry. It's okay. It's going so good. You want you to stay you on topic. Yo, if you don't like the questions, we can move on to questions. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys good? Is that coming, did you? Nah, yo, we're straight. Yeah. Okay. It would, can we guys be serious? Be sick to hear what you guys actually think? Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, how I feel about the new Portland graffiti is it seems like everyone has free reign and they came out of the woodwork. Like, uh, when I first moved to Portland, it was names. You know who the names were and stuff like that. And now it's, it just seems like everyone has a leeway and a free for all. And people are just doing it to become, like, popular because it's po the popular thing you can get away with. All right, so hold on. So uh, I, I, I'll give you an honest answer okay, now, yeah. what, I, what I think. Please. Uh, Your opinion. 
there sure is a lot of it and uh, definitely spots I've driven past a hundred times that I guess I never noticed and it's fuck kind of rowdy that like because of like the just the volume of what's getting painted the people are climbing out on shit way more and there's everybody's got jet packs it's, I guess that's kind of where it goes everywhere I like I think it's cool that people are finding like the spots that <laughs> have been right there under everybody's nose for fucking as long as there's been noticeable graffiti in P-Town. The thing about uh, Portland graffiti is, man, I, I'm not salty or jaded at all. And uh, spot selection, I used to be like that, like spot jockers and shit. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. You used to get fucking five years for tagging on a dumpster here. That's what it is. Yeah, was yeah, he used to get that. I straight. think that's what it is. Like with the fucking crazy ass spots, like hell yeah, they they they're not busting fools anymore. So like, there's a lot more. The uh, game changed. Yeah, blatant daytime shit. We it, it, the subculture has like become so popular. It's like man, it's so crazy to like a, a run through spots. The story that he told earlier about yeah how I got arrested and stuff, and now it, it, what he said. It's crazy to look back and be like, man, I already done did that shit fucking a decade ago. Just like Dyer. He already done did that shit fucking days ago. Oh. And, and people are doing oh, shit. No. People no. are paying spots that we did for the first time. <laughs> and, yeah. So how has it, like, impacted your life doing graffiti for so fucking long? The, uh, the reason I, like, really, like, started doing it was, like, I was... Me and a bunch of skater buddies were friends with like the tagger homies. We had a spot that was like a loading dock spot. There was a Golden West layup. And like a lot of the same dudes I went to high school with would like come to our skate spot in the middle of the night to go fucking paint trains. And I'm like, what are these motherfuckers up to? You know, like, what's up, homeboy? Fuck, I met you from fucking science class. And then like slowly but surely, like the skaters started like, oh, these motherfuckers are painting trains. And so what I always attributed it to was like going and like carving your name into a picnic bench, you know? That's like yeah. the best shit. Yeah. Like fucking gas station tags, rest stop scribes, whatever. Like describing a mirror, that shit. Can people that I don't even know that like so that have like no association with graffiti, but like somehow along the lines like found out what I wrote. Like motherfucker, I was in needles and I fuck caught you up in the fucking bathroom. Hey, yo, if, I, I, if I don't say it now, it's off a try. I agree with everything that he just said because it's completely true. Like, there is no feeling in the world when you roll up to, in the middle of nowhere and see someone's man to see that, that they were there. What he just said. That shit is crazy. Like, oh shit, whether it's trains or a fucking, it's or just, something that's Permanent, and that's like the a, thing about graffiti is like, man, there's no feeling in the world, especially when you know someone. And also, that that's a horrible curse with graffiti these days because you might look up to someone and you meet them and they're a fucking piece of shit. The right? worst they're motherfucker they're, they're you've graffiti. ever met. And a lot of fucking times it's like, usually it's, it, somebody that's like the most up dude is like, you meet them in real life and you're like, fuck, no wonder you're right, out there just yo, like we're not gonna drop names, criming right. out the fucking games because you don't sleep, motherfucker. You're up all night robbing fools and like you fucking got a can of fucking Valspar and you're fucking tagging on your way back to your fucking hobo hut on on some fucking burned up RV. Oh my God. And now I fucking already yeah. just forgot the question again. Would you reiterate, please? Doing graffiti for so long, like, what is it? How do you feel? What he just said. Well, it... Like, it fucking has introduced me to, like, my best friends I've ever met and, like, the shittiest, lamest motherfuckers I've ever met, too, you know? Like, the illest fucking criminal fucking savages that, like, have clout because they're up, but they're, like, when you actually get to meet your fucking... Somebody you've seen up a lot, like, Mom, fuck, maybe I'll cross paths with that dude, and then you actually meet him in real life, and they're the fucking worst person you've ever met. Like, the shittiest... Thieving ass, liar, fucking rapist, yep. crackhead. Yep. But, apropos of that, some of the best friends I've had for almost 30 years are on my crew. And the impact is like, because like, generally, like, skateboarders, that's what you have in common, like, your homies for life. And, like, it doesn't necessarily 
go cross over into graffiti. Like like I said, some of the worst motherfuckers I've ever met in my whole life. Probably the worst motherfuckers I've ever met in my whole life were writers. The shittiest people. Huh. Uh, oh, what if like the new graffiti was to fucking not do it at all? Oh. Or like to leave little notes that said something like, I was gonna do graffiti here, but I changed my mind. Do it for popularity to talk about yeah and get and do stuff. that for sure definitely drop your name at parties <laughs> and Yo, tell motherfuckers cool. what you write so that they'll fucking Yo, he's just stand up drop the shit out down. of you because that's what it's all about when it really boils down to it you hell fucking, yeah you fucking love running account. into fucking other writers that you think suck and then they're like what up dude fuck love your shit so definitely do it for that yeah absolutely